Thank you. Uh, good evening and welcome to our regular city council meeting for Monday, July 6, 2020. I'll now call this meeting to order with the roll call from Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Miller? Here. DeBoer? Here. Cruz? Here. Harding? Here. Dara? Here. Sires? Here. Tiber? Here. All members present, Mr. Mayor? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, and I'll note now that to protect against the spread of COVID-19, this meeting is being held via video conference. The public can uh, access and participate in the meeting using several ways which are included on the agenda. And um, this is being held in accordance with the Iowa Public Information Board. So uh, that said, we can uh, start our meeting with the approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve the regular meeting of June 15, 2020? So moved. So moved. The motion and seconded, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> that passes. Madam Clerk, do we have any agenda revisions for tonight? I have no agenda revisions, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, first, in our special order of business, item number two is a public hearing on the proposed plan specifications, form of contract, and estimated cost for the 2020 seal coat project. Is there a motion to approve and re receive and file a notice of hearing? So moved. The motion and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, are there any written communications filed with the city clerk? I have no written communications on file, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, with our staff comments tonight, we have Mr. Matthew Tolman. So Matthew, are you with us tonight? Yep. Thank you, Mayor. Can you hear me? Okay. Sure can, just fine. This is a public hearing for our annual seal code project. Uh, this project involves seal coating 10 streets and one alley covering 61,000 square yards, then also an additional 29,000 square yards um, and multiple single lane drives within our three cemeteries, and then including also eight additional city parking lots. Uh, work will include proper surface preparation, proper placement and compaction of the surface. The total estimated cost for this construction project is 244,000. $669.50. Funding for this project is provided by the city's street construction fund and also local option sales tax. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tolan. Um, I'll now open it up for public comment. If you wish to speak uh, from within Zoom, uh, you can do that by raising your hand with the icon, uh, raise hand, or if you're on a phone, you can dial star nine. <coughs> so does anyone from the public wish to speak on this item? Okay, I see one and so, uh, this will be a uh, speaker whose last four phone number ends in 0467. Go ahead, sir, or ma'am. Yes, this is Jim Skane, 2215 Clay Street. And uh, in this particular case, uh, the, the reason it should be uh, the, uh, seal coat as opposed to something else, is there a, a reason uh, why the, uh, this is this kind of uh, project, and uh, what uh, is specifically uh, uh, will it cover as far as the streets that are uh, be involved with? Okay, so there's been a question about uh, the streets that are included in this. Uh, is that a, a lengthy list, uh, Mr. Tolan? Uh, no, I can I can answer to some of those questions. Um, so our, our seal code program is part of our capital improvements project that's approved by council. Um, and the these seal code streets involve um, a series of, of work where the street will be bladed and regraded um, and then also placed um, with a new surface coat on top that will extend the pavement life an additional, um, we hope, two to three years. Um, depending on the location, the, the, the usage of the roadway network that's used there, whether it's a heavier used road or not. Um, but it, it is a commonly used practice here in the state of Iowa. Um, and then these streets are just, we're prolong, prolonging the life of these streets. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tolan. Any others from the public wishing to have a question or comment? Seeing none, then I will uh, now close the public hearing and bring us to item or part E, which is a resolution approving adopting the plan specifications, form of contract and estimate of cost for the 2020 seal coat project. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. It's been motioned and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Then this requires a roll call vote. Miller. Aye. 
DeVore? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Harding? Aye. Dara? Aye. Sires? Aye. Tiber? Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Madam Clerk. Item three is a public hearing on the proposed plans, specifications, form of contract and cost for the Clay Street, uh, Clay Street Park Water Quality Improvements Project. Is there a motion to receive and file proof of publication? So moved. Second. The motion and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. And uh, Madam Clerk, are there any written communications filed? I have no written communications on file, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Again, we have uh, Matthew Tolan for the comments on this item as well. So, Mr. Tolan, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, this is the public hearing for the Clay Street Park Water Quality Improvements Project. Uh, the City of Cedar Falls continuing efforts to update and continue water quality improvements um, in, the, in the city and specifically for Clay Street Park. The proposal includes two bow retention cells, one within the park itself and then one on, an, on Franklin Street. Um, the plan also includes a permeable alley along the eastern side of Clay Street Park. The total estimated cost for construction of this project is $182,864.50. Funding for this project is provided by the city's stormwater bond. And then we also have a $150,000 bond or grant from uh, the Resource Enhancement and Protection Grant by the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. Hey, thank you. Um, I'm now open this for public comment. Does anyone from the public wish to speak on this item or ask questions? Seeing none, um, I will now close this public hearing and uh, bring us to item E, which is a resolution approving and adopting the plan specifications, form of contract and estimate of cost for the Clay Street Water Park, or excuse me, Park Water uh, Quality Improvement Project. Is there a motion to approve? So so the motion and seconded and this, uh, any discussion from council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Tyler. I did want to express, I mean, first of all, the, the need here is tremendous. I know that this turns into a river through the middle of the city during high rain events. Uh, but I did have a concern regarding the overall uh, footprint of the bioretention cell in the park itself. Uh, the shelter that was uh, designed and, and constructed two years ago is intended to be a stage of sorts, too, that walked down into the uh, green space of the park. And I think we're losing uh, almost 50% of all that green space. And so I guess I was just wanting to make a plea uh, that we minimize the impact so we continue to uh, preserve some of the audience area for performance or, or other uses. Uh, green space is now in short supply at Clay Street Park with the, uh, the hard surfacing of the, of the basketball court as well as the uh, park equipment. So. Um, you know, to the extent possible, I don't know if that's working with depth or uh, possibly uh, modifying its location. I want to be extra sensitive to that park because so much green space is being lost. And by green space, I mean manicured mode area. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Um, over there. Go ahead. Mr. Tolan, how come uh, we, we got a grant for that? Did you say we got a grant, $100,000? Yeah. Yep, so uh, one of the big improvements with this park, um, currently out there, there is a, an existing bio cell. It's a little bit undersized. Um, and so with this project, expanding that bio retention cell and then including the permeable alley allows us additional storage, um, but also there's a, there's a good feature of water quality in there where we're reducing the amount of um, uh, load reduction in terms of nitrate and phosphorus and other uh, contaminants in our water supply before it reaches what would be Dry Run Creek. Um, and so these improvements are helping our, our public storm sewer system and then um, down the line as well as it reaches the Dry Run Creek and into the Cedar River. Uh, are those grants available annually? Uh, yes, so the REAP grant program, um, depending on its classification and what's involved with the scope of the project, uh, those are available um, on an annual basis. Great. Thank you, Matt. Any other questions or comments from council? Okay, seeing none, uh, then it's been motioned and seconded and this requires a roll call vote. Miller? Aye. DeBoer? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Harding? Aye. 
Dara? Aye. Sires? Aye. Tiber? Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, next item we have is item four, public hearing on the uh, fiscal year 20 uh, annual action plan for community development block grant and home project fun, uh, home program funding. Is there a motion to approve proof of publication? So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So Madam Clerk, any written communications on this item? I have no written communications, Mr. Mayor. And uh, with staff comments, we have uh, director sheets. Thank you. Uh, so this is the start of discussing our CDBG entitlement grant funds that we're receiving for federal fiscal year 20. We um, have received notification that we are uh, receiving an allocation of $273,111. And um, we have outlined in the memo attached in the, the packet uh, the primary activities that we would uh, spend those funds on for this coming year, and that is in um, compliance with our five-year consolidated plan that we adopted about a year ago. Um, with one note that um, we anticipate that uh, we will try to uh, work to spend the funding on a neighborhood recreational amenity, uh, provided that HUD would approve such activity. There are a number of criteria that we will have to meet in order to expend the funds in that manner. And so if we're not able to do that, then our backup plan is uh, to continue forward with other infrastructure improvement projects. Uh, for example, this past year, and we're, we're just now kicking off the construction of several sidewalks in low and moderate income areas. Um, and so we, we could continue with more of that if it were to be found that a park project is not eligible. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll move it now forward into public comments. Uh, does anyone from the public wish to speak or ask questions on this item? Let's see, Mr. Skane. So go ahead, Mr. Skane. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, on this, uh, you know, Mr. Mayor, that uh, none of the public have you know, access to the package. And therefore, when uh, you talk about uh, what's in this particular proposal, uh, none of us uh, out here know what, what's uh, being reduced and what uh, uh, Director uh, Sheets uh, indicated was uh, very sparse and it, it really doesn't clear uh, indicate what uh, the two hundred seventy thousand dollars is going to be expended for because because really uh, uh, depending upon the packet uh, the, the council has one side of the story but uh, there's maybe other sides of the story that uh, are not uh, presented in the packet. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kane. Um, we've covered this many times in the past okay. that the, uh, the council packets are available to the public uh, at uh, the city's website. Uh, you have ex uh, access as public members to the exact same information that I have and that the council has. I uh, just wanted to, to clarify that. Um, so I will now, uh, does anyone else from the public wish to speak on this item? Okay, again, uh, you can press the uh, raise hand icon on your Zoom screen or press star nine if you're on the phone. And seeing none, I'll now close that public hearing and bring it back to item 4E, which is a resolution approving and authorizing submission of the FY 2020 Annual Action Plan for Community Block Grant Home Program Funding. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Mm -hmm. A motion and seconded. Any council questions or discussion? Uh, just a comment, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Harding, go ahead. Uh, to Mr. Skane's point, I do believe that it, it in the packet, um, everything that the city has broken down, the money to go towards it, it's all outlined in there, correct, uh, uh, Stephanie or Director Sheets? Yes, yes, that is correct. And the plan has been available for 30 days. We did publish a notice in the courier and um, a phone call to me. I could have outlined that to anybody who had questions. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of clarify that that it is broken down how we would want to spend this money. So that was all. Okay, thank you, Councilor Harding. Any other questions or comments from council? Seeing none, then uh, this, the motion and seconded, and this requires a roll call vote. Miller? Aye. DeBoer? 
Aye. Cruz. Aye. Harding. Aye. Dara. Aye. Sires. Aye. Tiber. Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next item is five, the public hearing on a proposed agreement for private development with Community Bank and Trust, a division of Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust Company. Is there a motion to receive and file proof of publication? So move. Second. Good motion and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Good motion carries. Any written communications filed with the city clerk? I have no written communications on file, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so speaking on this item is Mr. Shane Graham, our economic development coordinator. Thank you, Mayor. Um, what we have before council tonight is an agreement for private development between the city and uh, Community Bank and Trust. Uh, if council might remember back at their last meeting on June 15th, uh, council approved a site plan uh, for a new uh, 2,900 square foot uh, bank building uh, right across the street from City Hall here at 312 West 1st Street, right at the corner of 1st Street and Clay Street. Um, they're in a, in a fairly old building right now. It used to be a former restaurant. Uh, doesn't really suit their needs anymore. Uh, so with council's approval at the last meeting, um, they are moving forward on, on demolishing that building and building a new, uh, more modern uh, facility that will meet their needs. Um, this property is located within the downtown urban renewal area and per the uh, urban renewal plan, um, this project would be uh, eligible for uh, an incentive uh, package, which would uh, typically include a five-year tax rebate uh, on anything increased uh, over what's the value of the existing building today. So uh, the existing building's value is about 420,000. They're estimating the new building will have a valuation of, a, uh, of approximately a million dollars to 1.5 million. Uh, so with that, with that increased valuation uh, is what we'd be looking at offering the, the five-year tax rebate on that increased valuation only. Uh, again, so um, that would just be the five years starting after the full completion of the project. Um, so staff would be recommending approval. Again, this follows kind of typical as to what uh, some other projects in the downtown have received uh, uh, per the per the policy. So, okay. Thank you. Um, I will now open this up for public comment. So, anyone from the public wish to speak on this item? I see uh, Ms. Bentley. So I'm going to allow you to talk here, ma'am. Go ahead. He's still muted. There she is. Go ahead, Miss Bentley. Do you have a comment, Miss Bentley? Okay, I'll come back to you if uh, since we can't hear you right now. Um, so I'll try again in a moment. Uh, Mr. Skane, go ahead, sir. Yes. Uh, did I understand correctly that uh, there will be a five-year uh, tax-free uh, arrangement, so that on the amount above four hundred twenty thousand, the the uh, bank will pay no taxes for five years? Thank you for the question. Uh, for staff, uh, Mr. Graham, are you able to answer that? Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, that's correct. So it's a tax rebate. So they would pay their taxes in full and then the city would rebate the the amount of the 100 percent of the tax increment above and beyond what is existing today over a period of five years. And in the agreement, it spells out the maximum amount um, based on the anticipated valuation of the of the building. OK, thank you. And I'll go back to or actually I see Mr. Seymour. Um, so, Mr. Seymour, go ahead, sir. Name and address for the record, please. Let me get you unmuted here. Yeah, so I can I can press unmute on my end, but then he still is muted. There we are, Mr. Seymour. Good to see you tonight. Go ahead, sir. Okay. We are not hearing you either, sir. All right, we've got Mr. Skane okay. So I'm going to try uh, Miss Bentley real quick. Uh, Miss Bentley, can you hear, uh, comment in now? Okay. Miss Bentley, are you with us? Yeah, unfortunately not. So how about how about Mr. Seymour? 
Mm. So we've got some technical difficulty on this one. Um, I'm going to try something different um, for Mr. Seymour and, and Ms. Bentley, if you, uh, especially for Mr. Seymour. If, uh, first, if you would like to call my office number, it's 319-268-5118. That's 319-268-5118. And uh, I'll be able to put you in over the speakerphone. There we are. I see Ms. Bentley. So I'm going to bring her on through my speakerphone. Uh, echo out. So go ahead. You should be okay. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Not sure what happened there. This is Casey McKenzie. Sorry for the echo. I just wanted to I'll quickly make it saying that we're looking forward to this. Thank you. Okay, so she said she was uh, just looking forward to the project. So. And now? I'm mean, still not hearing from Mr. Seymour. Um, and here's Mr. Seymour. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Go ahead, Mr. Seymour. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I apologize for the technical errors here. Uh, Bob Seymour, 2710 Country Meadow Lane. Uh, we're really excited to rebuild this building downtown. We appreciate the staff working with us. Uh, we had a, a, a few uh, changes we made along the way, and uh, we're excited to start construction of this new building. We appreciate the uh, tax incentives to be part of this deal, and uh, we'll get going to downtown in a few minutes. And it's nice being on this side for a little little change. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Seymour. Anybody count checks that on there? Did everybody hear that okay? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so uh, any other speakers on the public end? Okay, seeing none, uh, then I will close the public hearing on that item and bring it to uh, council as a resolution um, approving and authorizing an execution of a development agreement with Community Bank and Trust. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Second. Motion and seconded. Open for council discussion for questions to staff. Okay, and seeing none, then uh, this will require a roll call vote. Miller. Aye. DeBoer. Aye. Cruz. <clears throat> Cruz. Thumbs up. Mr. Cruz. Harding. Aye. Dara. Aye. Sires. Aye. Tiber. Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It's going to be that kind of meeting tonight. Uh, item six is a public hearing on the proposed rezoning from R1 Residence District and A1 Agricultural District to RP Planned Residence District of property located east of Union Road and north of 27th Street. Uh, is there a motion to receive and file proof of publication? So um, moved. The motion is seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. And Madam Clerk, do we have any written communications filed? I have no written communications on file, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Ma'am, uh, for this item, we have uh, Ms. Karen Howard. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm going to show a short uh, presentation about this rezoning. It is a very la large tract of land. It's about 170 acres. So I thought it might be beneficial to the council and the public to, to see what's happening here. So I'm going to share. go ahead and share my screen. And just want to make sure everybody can see that. Yep, can see it fine. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, this is a location map here of the de large development. You can see here it's north of 27th, West 27th Street and east of Union Road. Uh, it is located uh, south of the Lexington Heights neighborhood and uh, west of the new location of the, uh, the Cedar Falls High School site. Uh, the, the petitioner is asking for rezoning to planned residence district. Um, that 
uh, rezoning district allows for master plan residential on larger tracts of land has a lot of flexibility for lot sizes and dimensional standards, um, but has to be developed according to a master plan to ensure it, it develops in an orderly fashion with good traffic circulation and other amenities for high quality living. Um, so the master plan you can see on the screen here, um, uh, uh, staff uh, presented this to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, it is, uh, we believe, a good uh, plan for the development of the, of the neighborhood. Uh, it proposes single family detached homes on a range of lot sizes. Uh, it does have a number of stormwater basins planned throughout the development. Um, and those will be developed in more detail during the planning process. Um, they are proposing a three acre park to serve the needs of this uh, large uh, development. The Parks and Recreation Commission has reviewed that proposal and, and uh, has voiced their support for that. Uh, with regard to street and trail connectivity, um, the master plan does show good street connectivity, approximately every uh, streets connecting approximately every 600 feet. Um, they've stubbed the streets, are proposing to stub the streets to the property boundaries to allow for those extension to adjoining properties for future <coughs> development. Uh, it does show good connections to the Lexington Height neighborhood uh, via Waterbury Drive and Cross Creek Drive. Um, it has a connection proposed to the site of the Peter High School. Um, it also has some trails uh, along West 27th Street and along um, Union Road and uh, six foot trails uh, to provide good uh, bicycle and pedestrian connections throughout the neighborhood. One of the biggest topics of discussion uh, on such a large development is making sure that the project uh, and development and the streets are phased in a way that um, <coughs> provides good uh, east, west and north, south connections. Um, uh, so it provides good traffic circulation for the neighborhood. As you know, uh, we've had some trouble in different parts of the city with um, of streets connecting in a timely manner. So this was a pretty important part of the discussion. Um, the master plan does show multiple routes um, uh, for uh, connection. Uh, their phasing plan you can see here is numbered on the screen. And this is their, the the way they've planned out the development and how it would be developed over time. So you can see they start from the north end and area number one, it's that connection from Waterbury Drive um, over to Union Road. So that's that east-west, important east-west connection across uh, the creek and over to Union Road. And then expanding south to work area number two in the yellow here, and then further um, work, work area number three they're moving down to that southeast corner. There's a separate sanitary sewer that serves the southern portion of the development. Um, so that would be the access to the new high school um, and work area number three. Work area number four then would connect um, the two pieces of this development from work area number two down to all the way down to West 27th Street. So that would be that important north-south first north-south connection. Um, and then work area number five is that second north-south connection to, from uh, work area number two down through that pink area down to West 27th Street. And then work areas six and seven really could be built out at any point in time after that um, to fully build out this neighborhood. Uh, staff does recommend a condition that there be at least one continuous north-south route uh, from work area number two to West 27th Street within one year of the high school opening, which is anticipated in 2024. Um, that would uh, allow five years um, of development to occur prior to that first north-south connection being made. Um, you know, depending on that pace of development, you know, it may be that that work area number five needs to happen before three and four, and depending on how the developer wants to build out this development. But the important part of that is that we have that good street connection north south that would allow all the all the folks in this neighborhood and the neighborhood to the north to circulate down um, to west 27th street to be able to access um, the new high school uh, within one year of that school opening so overall once the neighbor his neighborhood is built out uh, staff uh, does find that this would be good traffic circulation throughout this neighborhood so with that, um, the Planning and Zoning Commission at their hearing on May 27th, they voted on 
a vote of seven to zero to recommend approval of the rezoning subject to this master plan and the development phasing plan and the other development conditions that were outlined in detail in the staff report. Um, staff has drafted a development agreement which was um, forwarded in your packet um, in draft form which basically formalizes the conditions that were in the staff report as presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, however, after a conversation today with the developer, it's our understanding um, that several conditions um, they would like to reconsider um, and they're not willing to uh, commit right now to all of the conditions that were presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, most specifically the phasing and timing of the street connections. So in light of that, staff recommends that council um, tonight continue the public hearing to provide uh, some more time for the developer to come up with an alternative approach that meets the intent of what was discussed at the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, I just would like to note that if the alternative that's proposed is substantially different than what was discussed at the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, that the item would need to go back to the Planning and Zoning Commission for further discussion. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howard. Before uh, going into that, uh, for Mr. Rogers, just a quick question for you, sir. Um, if we do, uh, if council does desire to go to a, a continuance of this public hearing, then what's the mechanism for that? Would I simply take public comment and then ask for a motion to continue? I think at this point, um, Mayor, what would happen is there'd be a motion to continue the hearing uh now and then it would come back because otherwise then the public comment and so forth would not apply to what eventually comes before council so i, I think that's a step we should not take just continue it now okay so um is there a motion to continue the public hearing into our next session so move is the motion by dara and second about um, any council or discussion from council on this motion? Okay, seeing none. Uh, is this a roll call or a voice vote? Voice vote. Voice vote. Okay, so all in favor of continuing the public hearing to the next session, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so this does uh, remain continued for our next session, which would mean that we don't do uh, part E of six and is there anything else that I need to do housekeeping wise, Mr. Rogers, to, to uh, move to the next item? So I'm not close, I don't have to close the public hearing then, correct? Nope. Um, the action's completed. You can move on to the next agenda item. Sorry, Thanks, I couldn't Peter. unmute there. Yeah, first time doing this part. Um, item seven is a public hearing on the proposed vacation of a portion of the existing storm sewer easement located on lot one, block 17 of the original plat, 314, or excuse me, 312 West First Street. Is there a motion to receive and file proof of publication? So moved. Second. The motion and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, opposed? Uh, that passes. And is there any written communication filed with city clerk? I have no written communications to file, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Um, for this item, we also have Ms. Howard. So go ahead, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as you may recall, there was a similar request to vacate the entire easement here and dedicate that back to the city uh, 50 foot easement uh, several months ago. Uh, we found that that was uh, legally problematic the way that ordinance was worded at the time. Um, so that resolution was never uh, recorded and to give time for the petitioner to consider their options. So we bring this back to you tonight. Um, to consider a new uh, resolution here to uh, rescind resolution 21932, which was April 20, April 6th of 2020, and then consider a new resolution, uh, which was in your packet, to vacate only a portion of the existing storm sewer easement. The effect is essentially the same, it's just a different legal mechanism to get there. Okay. Um, I'll open it up for public comment. So um, anyone wishing to speak on this item for a star nine? And uh, just a note for, uh, for Mr. Skane, I saw that your hand was up earlier during the talk and I wasn't sure if that was from the last session. So I did clear that out. Um, if you wish to speak on this item, you can press star nine. I see also Mr. Dahlstrom. So uh, Mr. Dahlstrom, go ahead, sir. Yeah, Mayor Brent Dahlstrom, just I had my hand raised during the previous agenda item. I was asked to 
to be on tonight to speak on it. I was, are you going to be coming back to my comments or? Not tonight, since this is going to be open until the next session. Um, it will be brought up again at the next council meeting and public will be able to speak then. So you're in the clear tonight. All right, thank you. So uh, Mr. Skin, go ahead, sir. Uh, even, even though this meet, uh, item is being uh, uh, continued, uh, there were a number of items that uh, uh, could have been answered. Uh, and that was uh, uh, the, what the, the cost of this 170 acres Mr. Uh, Steen, do you have uh, any or comments for item uh, seven, which is what we're on right now? That's the uh, vacation, or excuse me, yeah, vacation of the store easement. Well, I mean, you you can you can handle it that way, Mr. Mayor. You always do. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, anyone else from the public wish to speak on this item? And seeing none, then uh, I will close the public hearing for item number seven and bring it to council as a resolution vacating in a portion of the storm sewer easement on lot one, block 17. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. The motion and seconded, open for council discussion. And seeing none, then uh, this requires a roll call vote. Miller? Aye. DeBoer? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Harding? Aye. Dara? Aye. Sires? Aye. Tiber? Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us into old business, which is uh, beginning with item eight, uh, renewing reconsideration of resolution 219485, approving and authorizing execution of agreement with Will and per Perkins of Will relative to developing a resilience plan for the city of Cedar Falls due to the absence of a council member in our last session. Is there a motion to uh, renew reconsideration? So moved. It's been motioned. Is there a second to renew cons uh, consideration? Second. Am I allowed to second it? Uh, second has to, uh, yeah, no. it can only be, because we're still back at the original item, it can only be those who have who were on the prevailing side last time. So Correct. only only Mr. Cruz can and, and those on the prevailing end. Mr. Mayor, point of information. Go ahead. I mean, this, this topic is open and it was improperly handled at the last time. So to me, it's still open for discussion is the point where we're at. It really wasn't properly closed, if that's the terminology I should use. Because it, it's, we, we voted and seconded it for discussion we didn't have a discussion at the last, uh, and therefore, in my mind, it continues on. And Mr. Rogers, can you give the parliamentary explanation on this one? I'm not sure what council member uh, Cruz is referring to there, but the action taken was there was a 3-3 vote, so the measure didn't pass. Because there were only six council members present, the, the matter of reconsideration comes back before council under these unusual circumstances right now. So there has to be a motion second from the four on the prevailing side on the original measure, which was consideration of the contract. Correct. And that's, that's how I read the, uh, the rules as well. About Where, plan information. Uh, yes, Mr. Cruz. I, I believe I had this discussion with Mr. Rogers that there was no discussion allowed at the last meeting when we did have a reconsideration vote to allow the discussion. You terminated my attempt at discussion and improperly. So I feel that the discussion is open right at this point, that the vote was a moot vote. And now with all members present, we can continue. And it, it, the fact that it's on the agenda is not because a council member was absent it was improperly handled is my point. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Rogers. Now, now I understand the point. Um, uh, the mayor's ruling on that point um, is binding now. If there was a, uh, a wish to overrule mayor's ruling, it 
had to have been made at the time. And so once that is final, the vote's taken, then that is concluded. However, again, under the un unusual circumstances, we're back again because we had a council member missing. So now um, this is only on the agenda due to uh, rule 41 of the council rules. And so we're back to the original four who are on the prevailing side who may move or second on reconsideration at this time. Okay. And that said, does anyone wish to, uh, on the prevailing side, wish to reconsider? Uh, there has been a motion, Mr. Mayor. We're waiting for a second. Yeah, so looking for that second. Um, seeing none, then that uh, motion or the uh, reconsideration motion fails. Mayor. And, uh, yes, Councilman Miller. I'm curious about process. Did, did the council person ask that this be reconsidered or what is rule 41? Is that because Councilwoman DeBurr was absent then the reconsideration? Wasn't yeah, so rule 41, um, it's really unusual that this happened. Um, it says 441, when less than seven members of a council are in attendance at a meeting, an agenda item fails to receive a majority of affirmative or negative votes by those in attendance, then the agenda item shall, upon the request of any council member in attendance in the meeting, be placed by the city clerk on the agenda for the next council meeting and continued thereafter on the agenda for subsequent meetings until it shall reserve a majority of affirmative or negative votes of those in attendance. So now with council member DeBure here, it is possible to get a majority. In the event that an, uh, an item did, that continued under this rule is an ordinance, the ordinance shall not be considered. Okay, so that's not really relevant for us, but uh, because that occur, it, it is brought up the meeting after, um, it was possible to, to have this uh, brought up for uh, the reconsideration, basically to be reconsidered, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I guess my question is, so a council person did it request that this be put back on the agenda for this? Yes. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Mr. So Mayor. With that, I'm failing. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to allow it, Mr. Cruz, but we really do need to move on. Uh, what is it? In what you just read, there is no uh verbiage in there that said that there had to be a second to discuss this all motions require a second for discussion but the discussion was not closed or was not even allowed at the last time so i feel that was improper we're, we're working okay. with the information in this meeting and the, it wasn't i, I understand that but so this it's a moot point what you're discussing it's it's irrelevant. Um, not really but go ahead thank you i will so item, or that moves us into new business, which is our consent calendar. Uh, this is uh, items acting upon by a voice vote in a single motion without separate discussion, unless someone from the council or the public requests a specific item be considered separately. Does council wish to pull any item nine through 13 for separate discussion? Seeing none, does anyone from the public wish to bring up item nine through 13? Yes, Mr. Skeen, do you have single items you wish to pull, sir? Yes, uh, I, I have looked at uh, each one of these and, and each one of them is substantive. So uh, if we could, because these uh, are really significant. So Mr. Candy, could we have a specific, uh, specific comment you wish to bring up on each item? Uh, yes, I do, uh, because- Including they, they, the Infantry mm, Regiment uh, Recognition Day, the pro that proclamation. Do you have a substantive comment that you wish to make for that item? Can I, can I, can I uh, name the ones that I want to talk about? Certainly. I do. 10, 11, uh, 12, uh, we can skip 13. Okay. Uh, 14, so 12. 14, we're, we're, 15, Mr. and 16. We're, not, we're only working in the consent calendar right now, sir. If that's you right. That's what you understand the agenda. We can only we can only uh, discuss at the moment 10, 11, and twelve, and that's what I requested, sir. So we will. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was down too far. Yeah. So wait wait a second. Consent calendar begins with nine and ten, eleven, uh, twelve, thirteen. Yes, sir. Fourteen. No, sir. That goes into the resolution calendar. Okay. I feel like you're wasting okay. your time here, Mr. Skane. No, I'm not. I'm not wasting your time. On purpose. Is it, is it, okay, no, no. I, I just 
I just didn't see the resolution counter coming up. But the ones that I uh, uh, marked, uh, I would like uh, to talk about. So that would be 11 and 12. Down. Listed. Thank you, sir. So is there a motion to approve consent calendar minus uh, items 10, 11, and 12? So moved. So the motion and seconded. This, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, so those items approve. And that'll bring us back to item 10, which is receiving and file committee of the whole minutes of June 15th, 2020. Does anyone from council wish to discuss this item? Okay, Mr. Skane, go ahead, sir. Item 10. Yes, uh, see, this uh, is a receive and file of the committee of the whole minutes. Yes, sir. Relative to the, uh, to the following items. Uh, now, uh, a is probably uh, not significant, but B, uh, C, D, and E uh, are very significant. Yes, and uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, raise questions about e each of these. Because, no, sir. Uh, that's, no, sir, that's not allowed. And that's because this is an approval of the, the minutes themselves that they're an accurate reflection of what transpired at the meeting. This isn't a time to discuss the merit of the items themselves, sir. Mr. Mayor, what does it mean? I'm, I'm gonna mute him at this point because he's already given his statement on that item. Um, that will move us over to item 11, uh, which uh, is putting and filing. We, we have should get a motion. We should okay. get a motion in a second. Thank you. So it's, give me just a moment here. So this is a, a motion, or look for a motion to receive and file the committee of the whole minutes of June 15, 2020. Is there a motion? So, so moved. The motion and seconded. Any council discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so that carries. Item 11 is receiving and filing the city council work session minutes of, of June 22, 2020. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. The motion and seconded. Any council discussion on this item? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Mr. Skeen, did you wish to comment on this item, sir? Mr. Mayor? Uh, yes, Mr. Skeen, go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, on this particular one, uh, uh, it talks about response to resistance presentation. Yes, sir. Uh, and use of forced discussion. Now, when you receive and file all of these things, does this mean uh, they will have to come back to the uh, council for final action or what? Thank you. Um, when it comes to work session minutes or work sessions, um, those are a deliberative um, uh, process. And it could be that I, uh, information is generated enough to either create new ordinances or new resolutions. Um, in this case, there were some recommendations uh, from staff, and uh, that was included in the minutes of, of what the plan is for, uh, to do. So that will be uh, carried out probably without additional council action. Thanks for that question. Um, item 12 is, excuse me, it's been motioned and seconded. Any other uh, discussion from council on this? Okay, so this uh, requires a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes as well. Item 12 is receiving and filing departmental monthly reports of May 2020. Is there a motion to receive and file? So move. A motion and seconded. I'll open it for council questions or comments. Seeing none, I'll open it to the public. I see Mr. Skane's hand there. So Mr. Skane, go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, now we don't have access to those uh, monthly reports, uh, which uh, uh, reports uh, are involved this time with uh, item number 12. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, that um, Those monthly reports are included in the council packet. Um, they're available on the city website through the standard link uh, for uh, all agendas. And uh, it's about 70 or so pages each month that comes out from all the departments listing their activities for the month. So I certainly encourage all residents to view that. Um, any other questions or comments from council? on this item. Um, seeing none, uh, this is a voice vote. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, that passes as well. 
So that takes us out of the consent calendar and moves us over to the resolution calendar. These items will be acted upon by a roll call vote on a single motion without separate discussion, unless someone from the council or the public requests that a specific item be considered separately. <clears throat> Does council wish to pull any items 14 through 36? I, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull 14. Okay, 14, got it. And any others? No, they don't. Okay. 17, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so Mr. Tyber wishes to pull 17. And any others? Okay, seeing no others from council, uh, from the public. I see Mr. Skane, your hand is up. So uh, we were already pulling Mr. Skane item 14 and item 17 for discussion. So are there any other items from 14 to 36 you wish to uh, bring out? Uh, 15. Okay. There are, there are others, but uh, we won't worry about them now. Because... Well, yeah, okay. Um, you're, you're always welcome to pull individual items if there's um, uh, something that needs to be considered separately. Uh, but I've got 15. Does anyone else from the public wish to pull a specific item? Let me take a moment here. Okay, seeing no others from the public wishing to pull an item, uh, I'll then read the remainder of the items minus uh, 14, 15, and 17. So, Item 16 is a resolution approving and authorizing a loan agreement uh, for 4.3 million in general obligation loan notes and levying a tax to pay for the said bonds and approving a tax exemption certificate and continuing disclosure certificate. Um, item 18 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of agreement for painting services for sandblasting and painting of three pools at the aquatic center. 19 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a lease relative to property vacated by the 2008 flood buyout programs. 20 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of agreement for elevator maintenance with O'Keefe Elevator Company. 21 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of an access agreement for solid waste collection services at Hannon Park Condominiums. 22 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a contracted education proposal with Hartman Reserve Nature Center. 23 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a surface transportation block grant federal aid swap project with the DOT regarding the Cedar Heights Drive restoration project. 24 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of an agreement for traffic safety improvement program funding for the Cedar Heights Drive reconstruction project. 25 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of 14 owner purchase agreements and two tenant purchase agreements related to the Cedar Heights Drive reconstruction project. Um, 26 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a stormwater maintenance and repair agreements in the uh, Prairie Winds fifth edition 27 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution for completion of improvements in the Prairie Winds 5th edition. 28 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a stormwater maintenance and repair agreement with White Coat Series 2 in the Pheasant Alu 7th uh, edition. 29 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a contract for completion of improvements with White Coat 2 relative to Pheasant Hollow 7th edition. 30 is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a professional services agreement with ACOM for technical design services with the 27th Street Reconstruction Project. Then 31 is a resolution approving a revised Highway 20 commercial corridor overlay zoning district site plan. And this is for a convenience store gas station automobile service station in the Gateway Business Park. 32 is a resolution approving preliminary plat for Emanuel Lutheran Church uh, addition. 33 is a resolution approving the final plat of the Emmanuel Luther, Evangelical Lutheran Church edition. 34 is a mixed use approve, a resolution approving a mixed use residential zoning site plan for expansion of a parking lot at 4820 Oster. And then 35 is a resolution approving the final plat of the Prairie Winds fifth edition. And finally, the 36 is a resolution approving the final plat of the Pheasant Hollow seventh edition. Is there a motion to approve these items minus so moved. 14, 15, and 17. Second. The motion and seconded. And any, okay, this requires a roll call vote. Miller. Aye. DeBoer. Aye. Cruz. Aye. Harding. Harding. Uh, aye. Dara. Aye. Cyrus. Aye. Tiber. Aye. 
All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So that brings us back to item 14, a resolution approving and adopting certain revised personnel policies. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. The motion and seconded. Open for council discussion. Mr. Um, Martin, you brought this up, so go ahead. Yeah, so I just had some confusion and some concerns about the uh, section of conflicts of interest where it was changed to include elected officials. And uh, I guess the confusion was that there were multiple things that said there would be disciplinary action. And I, I don't see how the city, it, to me, it seems like the way it was changed, I could understand appointed officials, but including elected officials seemed like a, a, some sort of conflict of interest in and of itself, uh, or not a separation of, of powers, of checks and balances. So I wanted to see if we get some clarification on that, possibly amend that. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> clarification, uh, Mr. Rogers was the writer of it. Um, I guess for to rephrase that question, is there um, an expectation that there's a disciplinary authority tied in when it comes to council members and say like a conflict of interest or violating city policies, or is that a basic still a council policed action? The um, no employees of the city would have any authority to discipline council on these policies. I don't think that was the intent, nor could it be. There's no lawful authority for, for city employees to discipline elected officials, council, or mayor. Okay, so Mr. Hardy? I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it to me, it, it read that way. I mean, I, I appreciate the clarification, um, but I'll just take number two, for example. Employees and city officials are not to engage in directly or indirectly either on or off the job any conduct that is disloyal disruptive or damaging to the city such prohibitive uh prohibited activity also includes any illegal acts in restraint of trade now obviously we do not want employees or city officials doing any of that but it's to me it, it comes across as a vague thing it's it's tough to say so could a blog or something that someone writes be damaging to the city? Who determines if it's damaging to the city? Um, what kind of actions are taken? If it, you know, to me, it crosses into a, a possible uh, political, the city has political control, possible, um, you know, it, it merges two entities that I feel sh are, are inherently separate. So I guess, you know, that's how it reads to me, whether I'm misunderstanding it or uh, reading it differently than it should be. There are multiple ones that read that way to me. And I personally think that we should clarify it or change it uh, to appointed officials rather than city officials that are elected um, because, or clarify it further. That I guess those will be my, my points. My understanding of, of Robert's roles is any kind of parliamentary body or, or legislative body has the authority to police its own members. So the discipline is inherent in the, the existence of the body. So my understanding is that if, if a council member did something that was inappropriate, it would be the requirement of the council itself to um, take whatever measures are necessary, whether that's a letter of censure or some other action, a punitive actions against that member. Um, is that how you read it too, Mr. Rogers? Uh, to nobody extent, else to do it, except maybe they broke the law. Mr. Mayor, it, it, there are certain statutory um, requirements and prohibitions that a lot of these policies incorporate. So it's a, it's a, a lot of this is a restatement of Iowa law, which of course, council members are bound to follow. Um, in regard to um, who's going to make the determination whether something's in violation of these policies, whether or not someone makes that determination, city staff would be in no position to discipline uh, a, an elected official for violation of those policies. Okay. Just, Mr. Mayor. 
Yes, Mr. Cyrus, go ahead. Um, I think it kind of tramples on our First Amendment and free speech. I don't like it where it says anywhere an elected official. We are not employees. We are actually the elected governing body. So it, it, they, we should be stricken from all of this. If, if you go into the things where the city employees say something that's derogatory about the city, but maybe it is the truth, that's, that's even a little bit different in itself. I would rather have people speak up when they see things they believe are wrong, um, but to say a city elected official is gonna be governed by someone else, um, we are representatives of the people. So that's truly our main goal is to be the best representatives we can possibly be. And to have somebody over us saying, well, you can't do this or you can't do that. That's completely wrong as an elected official, as far as I'm concerned. I think anywhere that's written in there, elected official should be struck from this because it's not a workplace. We are representatives <laughs> of the people and we are representatives of the city. So- Mr. Cyrus, would you I like to put that forward as an amendment? Am, am I putting it as an amendment? Well, I was gonna absolutely completely vote no on it, but to, to have that be a resolution where you strike every single time it mentions a city of elected official, I would feel much better about it, but I also want our people to be able to speak up. I don't want anybody to be hushed and worry about losing their job. So, so again, I'm asking for a motion if, if you wish to do that. Sure, I can. I make a motion that we strike anywhere in this uh, the word elected official. Okay, it's been That's motioned. Is, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been seconded. Uh, further discussion from council now that we can talk about striking that item or where it says Mr. elected official. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Cruz, go ahead. I was going to bring up a point like uh, Councilman Sire says we're elected. We do get a token amount of money which under what appears to be here that draws us in as an employee, but yet, so Sire's point, we're representing the people and those representations may be counter to what staff wants or the city has had for policy in the past. Mm -hmm. So how do you change policy if <clears throat> we're, we're held to the feet to the fire like an employee and not an elected official. So uh, language and and I concur with Mr. Sires, unless uh, Mr. Rogers can clarify further. Okay, yeah, so Mr. Rogers, um, if it were struck the elected officials out of each of those uh, uh, items in the personnel policies, would that, would that render the rest of the document unusable or is it, is it, is that just a, a semantic, like one small piece of it? I, I want to make sure I understand the motions that there, it really doesn't talk about elected officials only, except in one spot. It, it uses the term city officials. Is that what was intended to strike that? And, and if that's the case, the answer to your question is the, the policy has been in place without this change for a number of years. So it'd still be a workable document for sure. Okay. Uh, Mr. Harding. Yeah. Um, I think, what the intent, and I could be wrong, it seems that uh, <clears throat> appointed officials were wanting to hold appointed officials to uh, the this, and I think that I could see the, the argument for that, but, um, and I see what Mr. Rogers said, it does use the word city officials on all number one, number two, number three. Um, I know we can't make an amendment within an amendment. Uh, yeah, you can. You sure. can? Okay. All right, so I would I would vote to make a motion. Make a motion. Sorry, I would make a motion to to change the word city officials to appointed officials, and also strike the words elected in the first paragraph of the policy, so <clears throat> that elected is not in there anymore. It just applies to employees and appointed officials only. Okay, so that's been motioned. Is there a second for that item? And, and I'm in when I run, I run astray, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> so is there a motion, is there a second for that item? Yes, I second that. Okay, so yeah. seconds. And I'll open that up for discussion. So Councilmember Miller. To Mr. Rogers, isn't there, there's a portion of this that is 
intended, I mean, it would, the background is in state law, is it not? In that city officials or elected officials aren't going to do business with companies that do business with the city? I mean, isn't that, isn't there a state law component of this too? But most of it is. Yeah. I mean, I can understand Councilman Harding's point. I mean, the one, number two, don't do anything that's disloyal, disruptive, or damaging to the city. I mean, that, that's pretty vague, and I, I can see what he's saying there. But there's a certain amount of this that is just intended to follow state law and make sure that a council person isn't working with a business that the city just hired to do a roadway. So I, I don't know. Mr. Mayor. Hey, Councilor Harding. Um, I, I do see uh, Council Member Miller's point that this a lot of this is state law, but the big difference from the way I'm reading it and the way I'm viewing it is that that would then be enforced by the state. This is in the city's personnel handbook and seems to be, it, it implies that the city could somehow, uh, to me, that's how I read it, that the city would then be the governing body over these uh, possible um disciplinary actions even though then we say that the council would have to do it but it just gets convoluted to me uh over why is it in the the city personnel handbook what if it's a state thing okay then that's going to be handled by the state and if we want to apply this to appointed officials that are appointed to uphold them to a level of standard then uh i understand that but let's leave the elected stuff to the state and let's keep the entities completely separate uh, checks and balances and, uh, I, and, and governance in the way I see it. L let's keep it simple and uh, keep it separate. But back to your point, doesn't that also hold us accountable to the public, which is what your initial point was, is that we have a policy at the local level that says, I'm not going to work for a company that the city hires. Doesn't that do something? Doesn't that reassure the public that we have a policy that here at the local level, not something going to state ombudsman or anything like that to where that I'm going to avoid a conflict of interest while I'm in this role. I think that's good for the public. I mean, I can see that side of it, but then who, but then again, it's such, it's not written to me in such a way that I can understand, uh, or see how it would clearly be taken care of within the city and and then therefore how it couldn't be corrupted in some way possibly down the line so uh to I, me I, I just say leave it simple and, and separate and and uh and just include employees and appointed officials that's why i see it that way i do see your point about holding us accountable on a local level and i would hope everyone would do that but uh as i do strongly believe that we get better results with the separation of the bodies and checks and balances in place. Okay, Councilman DeBoer. If they wanna take out those words, what would they think about adding an item number 10 that simply says that all city elected officials are recommended to comply with these provisions or policies? That way it takes out the disciplinary words that they're worried about. Because really, these are recommendations or, or personal policies that are good recommendations to do. I think as an elected official, they should be expected, not recommended. Okay. Uh, and to me, uh, I think we should be held to a higher standard than employees. And I have no problem. Uh, I mean, I, I get it. I, I get the subtleties of it. And I know it's free speech and everything else. But things have worked uh, pretty darn well. And I think as elected officials, we have an obligation to stay on the state and straight and narrow. And if we don't, or if we're complicit with some business person, it'll come to, to light. I don't, um, I, I trust our staff. I trust Kevin to put together um, a reasonable set of expectations. And so I don't see um, sitting here and trying to micromanage what the staff is doing is doing us any any of us any good I, I agree frank i was just trying to find a compromise no i hear you i i i understand what you guys are saying i don't view it as micromanagement i view it as governmental yeah. philosophy and making sure that we cover all the bridges down the road number two especially is very open very vague very open to uh interpretation 
and could be used in negative ways. And I'm, I'm not saying that our staff is negative. I love our staff. They've been great to me. I'm just saying for future of city or the future of Cedar Falls, I want as clear cut and as simple of policies that prevent corruption from ever happening. And to me, that right there could be used in, in many negative ways. There. Okay, thank you. Yes, Councilmember Miller, go ahead. Back to your original point. There's a parliamentary procedure for this council, this body, to have a say in something if it was out of line for any other council member, correct? Correct. Council, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Kevin, but council or any deliberative body has the ability to um, discipline its members. Self regulate. Yeah. Yes. The question is, how far does that discipline go, I guess? Ultimately, th there's only a few ways ultimately elected officials or are, are, changes happen or they're disciplined, right? They're, they're, they either resign, they're removed for cause, or they're rejected at the ballot box, three, mm -hmm. three R's. So while council could, could discuss uh, among themselves behavior, maybe even pass a, a motion of censure. I'm not sure how far that goes unless it's, it's acts that are removable, clear violations of the law that fall under the removal statute and ordinance. And then that's a whole nother process. Yeah, I think our ordinance my, my point is it's, it's still a safeguard. I mean, it, it puts it for us being political per se, that would put it back in the public's hands to put the cause or whatever if they wanted to. It certainly would bring it to the public's attention, yes. for sure. So I guess then that's, I can understand the conspiracy or I don't even want to use that. I don't mean that that way, Simon, but I'm comfortable with the policy and I've signed it every year that I've been on the council, so. Okay, so um, yes, Council Member Cruz. I guess it's more of a question to Mr. Rogers here. If, if we are reiterating in our city policy, they're already stated at the state level, do we need to do that? I mean, there should be a separation if we're doing something additional to clarify for the city of Cedar Falls and its, its officials, then we would want to do that. Um, you know, I'm looking at just the, the item in number two, any conduct that is disloyal. So if a council member disagrees with staff's presentation or interpretation of oh, you're breaking up there, Daryl. Proposal brought forward and yes, where did I break up? <laughs> um, item number two, conduct that is disloyal is stated there. If that is uh, invoked when a, a council member disagrees with a staff position, are we being disloyal to the city? I think the basic question is who arbitrates um, violations here? And I think that that would be at the council. Staff would have no power to do that. Right. I think so that's what the mayor's uh, point's been all along. Yeah, and if I if I tie that back to the motion that's on the on under consideration now, that I what it was was striking the term elected official, and then uh, changing uh, city official to be appointed official, and leave council out of that entirely, the elected official, and I guess me for that matter, um, as the mayor. So, is is there any other discussion for that before we do a, a vote to say whether to move forward? Okay, so Mr. Rogers, would this be a voice um, to- It would, Okay. on the amendment, to the amendment. So um, I read the amendment. Does anybody need a rereading of it? So the amendment is to remove the word city official. But yeah, remove the elected. word city official, or actually change city official to appointed official, and then to strike out elected official entirely at the start of that paragraph. So are we working on the amendment to the amendment though? This is the amendment yes. to the amendment. That is the amendment. To the Mayor, if I may ask one more question. Certainly. Kevin, why 
what are we adding this? Is there a reason behind why the two words are added here? Sure. Um, the, the thinking originally was, it was a little ambiguous as to folks appointed to boards and commissions. Wanted to address that to make it explicit on the conflict of interest ideas. For council itself, um, the thought was, well, council has signed the conflict of interest form, which is a really good idea for years and years and years. This sort of codifies that. And while we're at it, the rest of these items, um, four, five, six, basically reiterate state law anyway. And so while the state addresses a lot of these issues, this is the, the city saying, and we as a council also agree, it's, it's important enough to state it right here in our personnel policies that we're gonna abide by these state mandates. Okay. Do you, does council have to do that? No. Okay, so with that said too, I, I do need to, to follow along with our public comment part two, and I see that Penny Pop has her hand up, so I'm going to open it for the public comment part now. Uh, Ms. Pop, go ahead. So this is Penny Pop, 4805 South Main. Um, in following along in the conversation, I have two observations. When I was going through the packet and reading 807, it seems to me that appointed officials were added to the definition of city officials. And if that's the case, I think that council should feel comforted that the transparency that, um, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> Um, the transparency that we're looking for in good government um, is coming to light. Um, we all live in this small city together and folks that serve or work on our behalf will eventually find themselves in a conflict of interest. And there's no shame in that. And there's also um, no shame in admitting that there might be an appearance of interest or a conflict of interest. But publicly acknowledging that, it to me, it demonstrates the integrity of our board and commission members, as well as our members of council. And it demonstrates that transparency and it follows good governance. Um, I think the public is being represented in a fair and equitable manner if we bring this topic up and make everyone agree. Um, I urge council to support the changes in 807, whether it be um, just the appointed officials or the city elected officials. We all need to be on the same page. Thanks for your time. Okay, thanks Ms. Pop. Uh, Ms. Saul, I see your hand as well. So um, name and address for the record, please. Yep, I've got you unmuted, so I'll wait for you to speak there. Hmm. Leanne Saul, 1825 Green Hill Road, Cedar Falls. Okay, um, so I guess my only objection would be item number two um, in including elected officials in item number two. I agree with conflict of interest in terms of business and that sort of thing. I, I, the question I have is who determines when someone is considered disloyal, disruptive, or damaging to the city? Um, I agree that elected officials are there to represent the citizens of Cedar Falls in doing city business. But if someone on city staff decides they don't like what an, a, an elected official says or doesn't like their vote, what's to, what's to stop them from saying, oh, you're being disloyal, you're being disruptive? Um, or damaging to the city. I think that's very ambiguous and vague and leaves um, a lot of uh, things out in the open that shouldn't be. Elected officials are elected to represent the citizens. I agree they should not be doing business um, and conflict of interest, but item number two does bother me. Um, and I would recommend and that you do remove elected officials from the language. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Ms. All. And that was something that came up as the, part of the discussion earlier was that it's the uh, uh, elected body, the legislative body that polices its own members. So the only people who could determine whether a conduct was disloyal would be the rest of council on a uh, majority vote in order to do either a letter of censure or some action of removal. Um, so it'd be pretty hard pressed to, to make that case there. Um, Mayor. Yes, council member Miller. In terms of other boards and commissions, in regards to say P and Z or park mm -hmm. and rec or something else, the council could take that same action in, in regards to those boards and commissions as well. Right, that's, that's a great question. Um, in my talks with the boards and some of the boards and commission chairs about this, um, they said that they didn't, I, I personally thought that they, they should have that policing authority within their own body, but I've heard from them that they, they don't feel comfortable in that kind of a role and it's not provided in their bylaws, just like with council, it's not provided in our ordinances. So my understanding, it's not written anywhere, but my understanding is that if there were a, a problem with planning and zoning um, that, or with another commission, then it would be a matter for council to address rather than that board uh, itself, because they just didn't feel like they had the technical competency or the, um, they, they're, they're basically working as specialists in a certain field rather than as a, as a legislative body. So unless Mr. Rogers would disagree with that, I, I saw that as the smart or the prudent way is that council would determine that. Does that answer your question, Mr. Miller? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a very important role to have at some level. So if it's just by our consensus, our understanding that it's council that is, is meant to take action on that, we'll definitely exercise that when needed. Okay, other questions um, before we- Mr. Mayor? Yes, go ahead. Who brought this forward to have these things changed? Uh, did somebody ask for this? I, I'm still of the point city officials, we govern ourselves, we're our own body. If somebody does something wrong, we're at the mercy of the rest of the council. Mm -hmm. We try and do the best thing. And we get fired when there's an election time. Uh, we work for the citizens, do the best we can, speak out. We have our freedom of speech, just as, well, I believe our, our, our employees should have the same rights. But I just don't understand if it's state law anyway, why do we try and write these other things when we are gonna control each other and have all those reasonings? If you just took out that, uh, I guess it'd be fine, but I'm still for, if something's wrong, I want people to speak up. That's all. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that that, uh, that would exist um, re regardless because of how the law is written or how the understanding is of who controls counsel. But I appreciate uh, Mr. Harding's point of saying, if, it's, if that's the case, why even put that into the um, ordinance or the, the, the policy manual? I mean, exactly. Okay, so... It's, it has been motioned and seconded for, for a striking elected official. Um, I, I think that we've covered all of our bases on this. We could, we could spin our wheels for, for a, long, a lot longer on this. But, Mayor, uh, can I just make one clarification? Yes, Ms. Rodenbeck, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to state that, you know, some of this also has to do with our financial audit every year. So if you take one, four, five, and six, those are things that whether a city council stated in the policy or not, we're still gonna have to know those things. In other words, we have to disclose if there's, you know, if we have an elected official that owns a construction company that the city does business with, we have to disclose that in our financial audit and provide that to our auditors. So that conflict of interest form gives us that information to disclose. When you look at five, you know, one of the things that we also have to disclose for the auditors, if we know any known, um, fraud that's going on or known um, improper actions that are going on. So obviously five, you know, addresses if there's gifts um, accepted. So I just wanted to point out that, you know, some of this, again, why council members have signed those forms for years is be, has to do a lot with our financial audit. Um, now two maybe isn't. So again, if, if that's maybe the policy that's causing some concern, then maybe um, you know, we don't need to add it to number two, but I will tell you some of those other ones do directly affect what we have to disclose in our financial audit. Okay. All right, thank you. So um, that motion that's been uh, seconded is to strike elected officials and then change a city official to appointed official. Mayor? 
Yes, uh, Councilor Miller. <laughs> to Mr. Rogers, can this be amended again? <laughs> I'm afraid not, but um, the motion to amend could be withdrawn and restated. Uh, point of information uh, on that. We can accept the amendment that then changes the language and then we can make a further amendment on the amended document, right? Because what I'd like to do after passing this amendment is strike in number two and appointed officials, because I think that really solves the problem here. Uh, it preserves all the integrity that's necessary to have this document serve as a playbook for employees as well as for appointed officials. Uh, it's consistent with state code, although, you know, policies and procedures don't have to be, but this is the, uh, the, the source of, of truth for, for employees and, and the ultimate guide. Uh, but the real contention is number two. So my next amendment after we pass this one would be to strike the, uh, the red and number two. Uh, and, and then I think we've satisfied most people's concerns. Okay, so it's been motioned and seconded. Just if I can make one more statement, sorry. I think going through with this amendment, it takes off all of our boards and commissions. And I, I guess I, I feel like this conflict of interest or personnel policy is intended to give everybody a playbook of what the expectations are. And so I guess I would lean more towards somebody scratching the amendment and let's remove number two and be done with it. But just Okay, well, just to be clear, I, as I understand it, the... We're not at this point with this amendment. We wouldn't be changing uh, or removing the appointed official part. We're only striking elected official and changing where it says city official to appointed only. So that does meet that requirement. If I understand that right, Mr. Miller. Clarification. Um, so, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, committees and and boards are appointed officials, correct? So so it would cover cover all that stuff that that Council Member Miller just said, right? Okay. It also removes from every one of these elected officials, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Part of which Director Rodenbeck just pointed out is essential for some of the work that we do in the city. So I guess that's my contention there. Well, I would be, I mean, I don't have, I, my main issue, I don't have an issue with having to disclose if you get a financial gain or you work from, I don't want anyone to have a conflict of interest in the means, I, I definitely just have the biggest problem with number two because I feel like it crosses, it could cross over into political realms. So I would. Yeah. Have not try your uh, amendment to the amendment? Or, haven't or just vote no. <laughs> Haven't elected officials always be always been considered employees because they collect salary from the city? They're not employees. They're not. No. Strike that thought. <laughs> That's what I needed to have clarified. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. So we either go forward with your amendment, Simon, or you remove your amendment. Is that correct, Mr. Rogers? You can remove your amendment and somebody can make another one and we scratch number two and move on. Good. All right, I, I, will, I will remove my amendment so that someone can come up with a feasibly better amendment that we all can agree on. Okay, so we've removed the amendment to the amendment. Now we're back to the amendment. I don't remember the amendment. It was to I scratch do. everything city officials and okay. elected. I'd like to make a, an amendment that we remove number two from this policy. Everything else stays the same. I'll second that. Okay, so it's been motion and seconded to remove number two from that policy. Um, any other discussion from council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council Member Cruz. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Rogers' opinion on doing, by doing that, do we um, lose ground or are we shooting ourselves in the foot in any regard? Partic I mean, I appreciated your comment that an elected official is not an employee even though we get paid a per diem. That, that Again, breaking up, Councilmember Cruz. 
I'm, I'm asking Mr. Rogers, if you can hear me, that if we remove item number two in its entirety, will that ruin the intent of what's been on the books for a number of years? Okay, you got that? I got that. It, it certainly removes it. And was that the amendment or was the amendment to strike and, and city officials for number two only? I guess I wasn't sure about that. My amendment? was just to strike elected officials from everything. That was my only, that, that's all I wanted to do. That was my first motion. Motion to strike the word elected officials from everything. That was all. Mr. Miller made a, or council member Miller made, a, uh, what was yours, council member Miller? That's what we were on, correct? Yes, and that's an amendment to councilman Sires. And I guess for clarification, it's just the city officials from number two, if that's a beneficial thing for employees to have on there. Right, so th then that way, just to restate that, it's is it worth dropping all of number two if all we need to do is strike the elected officials and keep number two and it's, it adds some beneficial value to this the process? So you mean city Rogers, officials? Elected. That's elected. That's Mine was only elected officials. Well, yeah. it doesn't state elected officials there. It says city Mr. Mayor, officials. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, you said and elected officials. Number two says and city officials. And city officials, okay. I think that's a beneficial policy to have for employees. So if we just take city officials away, Simon, does that? That, that would alleviate most of my concern because my main concern, again, I want – I do want to hold uh, elected officials to the highest standard and there should not be any financial conflict of interest, but definitely number two, I would be happy with removing and city officials from that because that, that would uh, alleviate any of my concerns of anything going on crossing entities or non-separation of power. Yes. To answer your question. Yes. So Mr. Rogers do with that first amendment that is already tied on this, um, do I do we need to withdraw that motion or vote it down in order to go back to removing and city officials from number two? Yeah, I, I would I would prefer that that motion to amend either be withdrawn or acted on. Okay, it'd be better, I guess, procedurally if it were withdrawn because we can't really go forward with this amendment right now. Okay. It's inconsistent with the amendment, the, the amendment to the amendment. All right. So, Mr. Sires, would be willing to withdraw that amendment? And what were we going to change it to then? It would be removing and city officials from number two. I understand. That, does that cover elected officials as well? Or we, yes. we had talked about just absolutely removing number two. Right. And, and we decided that, or, or council's and I, and question was that there was value to have that in. But and I signed my conflict of interest things too. I, I signed that stuff because I don't want a conflict of interest. That's not it. But when we're governed by the state as elected officials and we come up and we represent the citizens, I want us to be uh, have the most free motion to disagree with the city or engage in something or, you know, when it starts to talk about disloyal, disruptive or damaging to the city, we would never do that. That's where it becomes kind of strange. We move the amendment. I don't know what the right terminology is. Let's just vote on it. Yeah, we do need to move the amendment. If it, Mr. Rogers, is that correct? We need to move yes. the amendment to um, strike and city officials from paragraph number two. Is there a motion for that? Technically, isn't it? We're back to Mr. Sire's original amendment. And was that city officials? Was elected officials was mine because there was a few places in there where it said elected officials. So if you just said elected and city officials, I'd be good with that if you just struck that right out. You want it struck, stricken from everything in here? Yeah, city officials and elected officials. Yeah, I'm good with that. Are we, is that correct, Mr. Rogers, then? That's what we're voting on here is my amendment convoluting this now. <laughs> Man. Yeah. It's kind of both of them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to withdraw my amendment. Okay. Back Damn. to Mr. Sires. Sires. Yep. Correct? Yeah, because if I understand... Council Member Sire's amendment, that would make your amendment to the amendment moot because he's already doing that. Yeah, sure. Okay, do you, want, do you want me to change my amendment? Do you want me to withdraw that and make a new amendment that withdraw? says elected officials and city officials? No. Nope. <laughs> Let's move. Can we, 
what's the terminology to move is the vote? Call the question. Call the question. Okay. So Please. call the question on the motion, which is to strike. Okay, who, who can restate that for me? Strike I that, I elected official was his exact words on the motion or close to his exact words. Strike yeah. any word relating to elected officials. Jesus. Come on. Okay. So strike <laughs> any word related to elected <laughs> officials has been motioned and seconded, right? So now yeah. we're calling the question. Um, and this is a voice vote, is that right? Yes. Is yes. Okay, so all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay, I'm seeing some nays. So, uh, nays, hand up. So, uh, Susan, Frank, Mark, Nick, and Simon. So, the nays uh, have it. So, that did not pass, which brings us back to the original item. Um, can I make a motion then? Yes, please. Everything, make a motion. Else, everything else is off table. So, I'd like to yeah, make a motion to, to approve. Um, as staff recommendation, with the exception of taking off and city officials from item number two in the 807 conflict of interest. Second. Second. The okay. motion and seconded. Final discussion. Okay. Seeing none, then this requires a. Let's do a roll call. Roll call roll vote. Call. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here we go. Does everybody know what they're voting on? Yep. Susan's okay. amendment. Okay. All right. Miller? Aye. DeBoer? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Harding? Aye. Dara? Aye. Sires? Aye. Tiber? Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And that was only item 14. We're not, we're not finished, Mr. Mayor. Excuse me. Now, yes. we, now we have to go back after the amendment has been adopted. Now okay. we have to consider the personnel policies as amended. So oh. moved. Okay. So the motion is seconded uh, as a, to review as amended. And uh, any final discussion from council? Well, we. I thought that that motion approved all the personnel policies with just that one exception. No, no we, we just approved striking exception. and city officials from two. Now we're going to take up everything as amended. Oh, wait. So following, following our process, um, it's been motioned and seconded. I'll have it for council discussion. And seeing none, I do have to open it to the public. So, uh, Mr. Skane, go ahead, sir. No. You're still you're still on uh, thirteen, right? We're on item fourteen, sir. Your pardon? We're on item fourteen now. Okay. Uh, let, let, if I may make a comment, Mr. Mayor. Certainly. Um, how many of you have uh, attempted to uh, find the packet uh, by going through the site? Mr. I mean, all of you. Right now, no, Mr. no. We're only addressing item 14, a resolution approving and adopting certain personnel policies. We're not talking about. Yeah, I, 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 but but I'm 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 raising a a point because I've been told that I need to go to the uh, packet. And do you have a question related to approving and adopting it, revised personnel? See, I, not your out like on this. See, but on this particular point. Uh, uh, I found it impossible to even get to the packet, and so the, the reason for uh, wanting to talk about this is that, uh, as probably 99.9% .9 of the public out here, uh, we don't know what the council knows, and we do know Again, we do need. Mr. Skane, I'm going to rule you out of order a second time, sir. Uh, do you have a question or comment related to the resolution itself, sir? Okay, well, what what uh, point of order did I violate? Uh, what did I violate? You're allowed, you're allowed to speak on this item, and this item alone is yes, part I'm, of it. I am speaking on this item. You're, you're I not am speaking. talking about general access to the personnel or to uh, uh, the council packet. We've discussed uh, I'm, that. I'm saying I'm going to move out of order a third time, sir, and I'm cutting you off. 
Um, I, I hate to have to do that, but uh, comments have to be germane to the discussion itself, and, and his are not. So it's been motioned and seconded. Any final question or comment from council? Seeing none, uh, this requires a roll call vote. Miller? Aye. DeBoer? I don't even know what we're voting on, to be honest. So I'll abstain. Would you like me to repeat? Yes. So that you can yes. vote, Mrs. DeBoer? Sure. So this is a resolution approving and adopting <clears throat> revised personnel policies with amendments. And the amendments are, you mean with the changes in red? Correct. That, well, no, this is the changes that were brought up by council members. And Ms. Danielson, would you like to read that for us? Well, I didn't get Susan's last motion, but this would be the motion. Okay. This would be the motion approving and adopting certain revised personnel policies with the adopted amendment that was made by Susan and seconded by Nick. So basically ag agreeing to all the changes with number two with the red words out. Yes. Okay. So that's a that, yes. 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 Thank you, Susan. Cruz. Yes. Harding. Aye. Dara. Yep. Sires. Nay. Tiber. Yes. Six voting aye, one voting nay, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you, Madam Clerk. Then that moves us over to item 15, which is a uh, resolution approving and adopting the city's FY21 payroll resolution. Is there a motion? Move. Motion to approve. The motion seconded. Any discussion from council or from the public? Okay, seeing none. Okay. And uh, this has been motion and seconded. It requires a roll call vote. Miller? Aye. DeBoer? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Harding? Aye. Dara? Yep. Sires? Aye. Tiber? Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Item 17 is a resolution approving an, uh, the recommendation of the Director of Public Safety Services and the City Administrator by appointing uh, Craig Birdie as the Acting Police Chief. Is there a motion, motion to approve? So motion Second. Seconded. Uh, Mr. Tiber, you had brought this up for consideration. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering why we're at this point uh, uh, acting uh, director or, or chief of police uh, birdie has been in this role for 180 days and i believe that we're through the interviewing process at this point and mm -hmm. so our ordinances are written that the director of public safety is supposed to make a re recommendation followed by the uh, city administrator and then uh, the mayor uh, forms a recommendation first I, I don't know if these are two related uh, events, but uh, you know, I was hoping for some clarification because you stated in a blog post that this upcoming election is a proxy on the, well, I'm summarizing, uh, Mr. Mayor, but is a proxy on the uh, uh, chief of police. So could, could you just clarify maybe your comments and then uh, whether or not this is a related uh, Certainly. Task? I've, I've not received the uh, recommendation from the director of public safety or the administrator yet. And for my case, uh, if I did receive those recommendations, I'd wait till after the special election resolved, because I believe that it should be uh, seven elected council members who make that determination. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council Member Sires. So this is another temporary appointing of, of Mr. Birdie. How Correct. many days is this one for? 180 days, just as the last Another 180? Okay. At, at most. Okay. Her question, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council Member Hardy. Um, we have to do this tonight because the first 180 days is up and we haven't finished the process, correct? Correct. Okay. Mayor? Yes, Council Mayor Miller? Can Mr. Gaines or somebody comment on what the delay is? Or are we waiting for something? I thought all the interviews were completed as well. Is, are we all waiting for the election to happen? Or what is, are there, is there another delay that I'm not aware of? Uh, no, there, there. Uh, I have not gotten the uh, the actual memo to the mayor yet with uh, with uh, 
Director Olson and my recommendation, but we have that recommendation coming forward. Um, but the mayor did let us know that he would not be putting this on uh, the agenda until after uh, the election uh, tomorrow. If I can make a comment, I guess I, I don't feel like we're doing these guys any justice holding out on this. If this election goes to a runoff, I think Councilman Tiber's proven that he's fully capable of making decisions in this role. He approved a $90 million budget. I don't, I, I, I can understand your point, Mayor, but for the, for the gentlemen that are running for this role, it gets delayed to another runoff and then we're out another three months. I, I, I guess I don't agree. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion from council on this? Yes, Ms. DeBert. Definitely want to thank Mr. Officer Birdie for the fine job he's doing. Certainly. Yeah. Other comments from council? Okay. From the public? None. Then this requires a roll call vote. Miller? Aye. DeBoer? Aye. Cruz? Carol sleeping. Aye. Aye. Hardy? Uh, yes. Aye. Dara? Yes. Sires? Aye. Tiber? Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, next item, moving us out of the resolution calendar, is uh, bills and payroll. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, I think we're missing. Oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Item 37. Another page back in here. Yeah, item 37, thank you. Uh, item 37 is an ordinance, uh, passing an ordinance amending chapter two uh, administration of the code of ordinances relative to establishing a human resources division within the Department of Finance and Business Operations upon its first consideration. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 Seconded. Seconded. Um, open for council discussion. Seeing none, uh, welcome for the public. Anyone for the public wish to uh, speak on this item? I see none. Mr. Mayor, I didn't speak soon enough, but uh, ahead, Council so we're, we have two more readings of this, right? Before we uh, start hiring, a, a looking at a human resource position. Is that my, is that, am I right about that? Right, because this is a, a ordinance, so it requires three readings to be <clears throat> Okay, so uh, end of July, early August, before we move in that direction. Two more August. readings. Yeah, mid August. Okay. And, um, just to clarify, too, Councilman Deira, what we would do on that third reading then is also bring the job class forward that same night. But we figured we would wait, you know, to make sure that it would pass the first two readings. But that yeah, we'd... makes <laughs> makes sense. I get it. So we would do that all on that same okay. night. Yeah, okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Any other discussion from council on this item? Then this requires a roll call vote. Miller? Yes. DeBoer? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Harding? Aye. Dara? Aye. Sires? Aye. Tiber? Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, now I can go to allowing bills in payroll. Is there a motion to approve? So, so moved. Motion seconded. Any discussion? Then this requires a roll call vote. Miller. Aye. DeBoer. Aye. Cruz. Aye. Harding. Aye. Dara. Aye. Sires. Aye. Tiber. Aye. All voting aye, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, that brings us to city council referrals. Were there any referrals um, council wish to bring forward? Uh, yes, Mr. Bruce. Yes. Um, I had sent an email that I was interested in having us discuss um, having committees again instead of just the committee of the whole. And I was wondering if, if we can make a referral for that. Um, I thought that the email I sent would go into the packet. Okay. Um, no, I didn't didn't realize that was for everyone. I apologize for that. That's okay. Um, so yeah, what what uh, Ms. DeBrew had asked was if uh, 
uh, rather than just the single committee of the whole uh, and the admin committee, could we as a council or you as a council revisit um, reestablishing the committees that had been in place uh, back in the 2000s? So at least talk about the pros and the cons of having them. Okay, so um, would that would you want to uh, put forward a motion to have that at committee of the whole, or or how would you like to do that, Ms. Deber? I think that's about the only way we can do it. Okay, or or, or a work session. We could discuss it at a work session too. Either one. Um, either one's fine. Okay. Um, how about we? Uh, I, I'd prefer to do it as a work session, uh, so that we can discuss it, and not have to have too much count or uh, city staff prep work required for it, like a presentation. So, okay. um, it, it's, it's been motion to have a, a council uh, work session to discuss um, the reestablishment of committees. Is there a second? Second. second. Yeah, it's been motion and seconded. Any council discussion? Yeah, uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, it might be, I don't want a lot of work for staff, but uh, it's been a while since we've had those committees. It might not be bad uh, for staff to pull up out of our archives uh, what those committees were and kind of how the, what the makeup was and their purpose. Uh, I don't think, we used to at one time, I think had seven or something, didn't we, Susan? Yeah, but, well, not when I was on, we never had more than three. But uh, three or four, uh, I think it just engages us as individual council members more with individual staff members. And there's a sense of teamwork there that I think uh, we're missing. Okay, so um, it's been motioned and seconded. And um, if, if this is approved, I would look uh, to have this probably um, mid-August to late August, so we could uh, hash through it pretty quickly. Um, any final discussion? Then uh, this is a voice vote, correct? So all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes, excellent. Um, any other referrals? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Uh, Councilmember Sires, or is it Cruz? Go ahead, Cruz. Go ahead sir. Okay. Um, I want to make a referral to committee to discuss a modification of our street parking ordinance, specifically uh, um, not allowing commercial trailers in residential zone areas. We've had problems in the in the community with a couple of situations that are. Um, uh, abusing it and uh, would like to have a discussion on that, how we can rectify that. Okay, so it's been motioned. Is there a second for that item? I'll second that. Okay, Councilor Miller seconds. Uh, council discussion? Would, would that question, would that be in the form of a work session? I, I didn't hear where he was. It, it, it to. to committee is my, well, it could be a work session. This is an ordinance that we passed <laughs> wow. Put your banjo away, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> Mr. Cruz, you cut out again. <laughs> so to summarize, this is an Attorney Rogers brought to us a year ago, and we laxed on all of the requirements for on street parking for commercial trucks and everything else, and now we're seeing a situation where somebody's taking advantage of it so okay so it would go to committee of the whole i would assume that okay. probably makes the most sense because you would need council work to happen ahead of time for us to have a consensus and a motion off of all right that that helps me out thanks okay so it's been motion and seconded any final discussion on it then it's a voice vote so all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed okay that passes as well uh, any final items for referral? Okay, so moving into uh, council updates, does council have any updates to provide? I, Mr. Mayor. Yes, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead, uh, Councilor Cyrus. I, I just have a couple real quick things. It was my mom's birthday today. I wanna wish her a happy birthday and I love her. And I wanna just remind people that tomorrow is voting day and there are five good candidates and I'd love for any one of them to be on there with us. So just don't forget, uh, pick your candidate, find out as much as you can. There's some good stuff on the Waterloo Courier where you can look if you're still undecided and tomorrow's voting day. And I believe it's at Gallagher Blue Dorm. 
Right. And that's the only uh, polling location. This yep. Year. And that's all I have. And thank you very much. And I'm sorry if I caused anybody any grief. Okay. So any other council updates? Yes. Council member DeBeer, go ahead. Um, are we, I don't know if council updates is, is really the right place, but I was wondering if I can get an update from staff. Um, we've talked a couple times about that roadway connection from Ironwood to Green Hill. And I wondered if we can get an update on um, if there's been any update on that. Certainly. So, okay. Councilor, uh, uh, Mr. Gaines? Anthony, do you want to start off with that? Sure, I can. Yes. Um, you know, we've had questions, uh, continuing questions about the road connection of Ironwood to the Green Hill Road Extension area. And that road connection is development dependent. Um, we have received and reviewed several different development proposals um, dating back to May of 2017. Um, however, none of those have progressed through Planning and Zoning Commission and then ultimately City Council for approval in order to trigger start of construction to build uh, that road connection. Mm -hmm. There is um, kind of a small uh, piece there left at the north end of uh, the Prairie West subdivision. Um, it would be, I believe the name of the subdivision that we've been considering was Village West, if I'm not mistaken, where Ironwood would then connect into Green Hill Road extension. So. Um, to date, there have been a couple issues related to the stormwater plan, um, but we're hopeful that we'll continue to see that development move forward, be able to bring that forward for approval uh, that would then trigger the road connection. Um, so right now, there are two ways to access the Prairie Winds and Prairie West area. Uh, Eric Road is one of those, and then uh, Richard Road connecting into Harriet Lane uh, to Hudson Road is the second one. And then if I could just add on to that, we did look at some temporary solutions um, to just get construction equipment to come out that way. Uh, unfortunately, the, the price that we were getting in order to, uh, there's a drainage way you have to cross in there, uh, was starting to get pretty expensive just for a temporary solution. So that really didn't seem like a, a realistic um, solution. Well, that temporary solution, was that something we were going to be able to assess back to the developer since he's been not getting this built? No, we wouldn't, unfortunately. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other council updates? All right. So uh, before going into staff updates, uh, I just wanted to make a quick note, um, share my screen here. Uh, just to note the passing of uh, one of our boards and commission members, Janine Johnson uh, was on the uh, Historic Preservation Commission and has been very involved in um, city history topics and art and culture for, for decades. Um, certainly we'll, we'll uh, miss her. I really enjoy talking with her about Cedar Falls history. Uh, she was buried um, in Greenwood Cemetery on the 24th um, and our condolences go out to her family. Thanks for allowing me to share that. Um, so then moving into staff updates, uh, Mr. Gaines, uh, you had some comments tonight about closures and things for COVID. Yeah, I'll try to be brief, Mayor. Uh, last week we had a couple of uh, reported positive cases with city employees at the, uh, the rec center and the falls and also in our public works department. So um, those employees have been uh, are, are doing well, but they actually are, uh, are off work right now. And we've done some contract, some contact tracing with those employees to find out who else within our organization they may have, um, uh, I don't wanna say infected, but uh, that was in close contact. CDC guidelines that we're using is within six feet for uh, 15 minutes. So uh, total we have had five positive cases for employees and then uh, seven employees that are out with uh, 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 contact tracing. So just kind of a real brief, both uh, the rec center and the, uh, the uh, falls was shut down. They were cleaned extensively and um, uh, they're both obviously now back open. So. Okay, thank you. Any thank questions? Um, I was just curious if uh, Director Rodenbeck could, could give us a, a 30 second infomercial on the library's uh, reopening and how they're doing that. I know they were um, opening kind of a phased in to do appointments and so people can make appointments in the 
hour. Um, you know, I know they had extreme success with the curbside um, pickup. I think they were talking about how they had hundreds every day of orders that they were doing. So obviously people have been excited um, about getting their library of materials. So um, hopefully we can kind of do that phased in, things will go well, and then we can continue, you know, kind of um, keep opening more. So you can set up a one hour browsing appointment. Yeah. Um, I think they're allowing up to 30 people in at one time mm -hmm. and they're just closed from 12 to two for cleaning and then they reopen for the next uh, group of people yep. to come. So yes, Council Member Harding. I just had a question for uh, staff. Has there been any talk about uh, possibly opening up day passes for the, for the falls um, or reconsidering or relooking at that the way we've been doing that? I've had a number of citizens ask if it would be possible to do day passes uh, considering uh, the numbers are not super high there. Is there an update we can get on that? Sure. Um, you know, we wanted to monitor what the response would be in terms of the use of the season passes purchased. We have had uh, quite a few season passes where if everybody were to trigger the use of those at the same time, we would be at our capacity. So we wanted to watch that here. We've had we have two weeks of data. Of course, the first week we had several days where it was raining, and so uh, the pool was either closed for a portion of the time or all of the time. So um, we thought once we have some good information to review what's happening, we could look at whether there are other possibilities uh, that we could offer to the community. Do, do we have a timeline on when we feel like we'll have enough data by chance or when we, I guess, a timeline on when we may reassess it? I think it's going to be a combination of, uh, of looking at that. Our staffing levels right now, we don't really have as many lifeguards, and some of those are out with uh, that, that was positive testing. The other thing is when uh, Chris Schoentag and Bruce Brink actually really feel comfortable with where they are um, on the opening. So um, we're really going to rely a little bit on their uh, expertise and it's probably going to be by the end of this week if they make a recommendation to, to start to um, move maybe the number of, of maximum uh, uh, patrons we have in there. Also with, do we want to start opening that up to uh, um, uh, day passes like you, you had mentioned? Thanks. Okay, thank you. Could I a segue or additional question on that for Mr. Gaines? Certainly. Uh, do we turn off the day passes at some point in the regular course or in the past years? Do we hit a capacity level that you know the, the season passes get in first and then the day passes follow, or how is that operationally run? So in in the past, it's never been that the day passes get in. In our actually, without COVID, take uh, take that out of it. I want to say, Stephanie, isn't it like 1,800 we can get in the pool? It may even be a little bit more um, yeah. with mm -hmm. regard to a daily limit. So very few times have we actually had to have a line outside saying um, that you have to wait to get in. But with putting this, um, with the CDC guidelines and some of those putting the, uh, the 600 limit on there right now, we know that with the number of day passes, we could actually end up uh, getting those lines and so do you have day passes versus season passes and how does that work and who gets in first? Do we know offhand how high we get that in this couple of weeks? Did we get close to the 600 at all? Or did we maybe not have hot enough days to draw in a lot of people? Uh, it really depends on the day. Um, even a really hot day, you might see attendance drop off a bit because people aren't even interested in being out at all. So, um, but uh, depending on the day, we've seen our high has been around 150 to 200 people at, at any time. Thank you. There. Yes, go ahead, Council Mayor Miller. Question for Mr. Gaines. In, in terms of COVID cases within the city, I, I, I had heard about the rec center, I'd heard about uh, the falls, but I hadn't heard about public works. Was that a late in the day thing that we discovered or is there a different procedure for public works or? So the public works cases were actually in the, uh, the cemetery crew. So it wasn't really a facility that we had to shut down and they weren't, um, 
uh, Chase can maybe explain it a little bit better, but they weren't in a facility that had to be shut down. They weren't in uh, uh, something that we would deem necessary for a press release. Gotcha, okay, just curious. The other thing, you know, we wanna make people aware and we wanna be as transparent as we can with any of these facilities, especially when they're open to the public. But we do have to be very careful with regard to HIPAA and uh, these employees still have rights that um, we've got to make sure we protect. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So, any anything else for staff updates, Mr. Gaines? I think that covers it, Mayor. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so that moves us over into uh, public forum. So speakers will have up to one opportunity to speak for up to five minutes on topics germane to city business. Uh, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak tonight? See a few hands going up. So first I'll start off with a uh, phone number that ends in 2211. So name and address for the record. Um, hello, my name is Wendy Hoofnagel. I'm at 3119 Grand Boulevard. Um, I, I'm a little confused. I thought uh, agenda items, I'm sorry to back this up, but I thought agenda items 14, 15, and 17 had been pulled for discussion, but I only heard discussion of 14 and 17. Um, has 15 been approved uh, um, by by default, or has was it just an oversight, or did I just miss it when I was listening in on the meeting? Um, yeah, 15 was resolution approving and adopting the uh, 20, FY21 payroll resolution. And yes. uh, that, yeah, that was um, then uh, motion seconded and passed by council. Okay, that happened so fast then after 14 that I must have missed it. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, thanks for asking. Sorry. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Good night. Um, so I see, let's see, uh, Brent Dostrom. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Brent Dahlstrom, 5016 Samantha Circle in Cedar Falls, Iowa. I um, wanted to talk um, tonight about the West Fork Crossing Development Agreement um, that was that was earlier and wasn't able to speak. So the develop this has been something that we've been working with city staff for roughly 18 months to bring it here to today. And uh, last weekend, <clears throat> I was given a draft development agreement from city staff of which I forward on to the council and my engineer on Monday. Uh, we had a short week last week and uh, Mrs. Howard reached out to me today and asked me if I had any comments of which I said, I know for sure we're gonna have one. I don't know what else we're gonna have. And tonight it was portrayed as if there were multiple comments and things. And I believe in the future that if you're gonna give a development agreement that you're agreeing to something for 170 acres of land, I think it, would be respectful to any developer to have more than four business days to review that development agreement and be given the opportunity for their for their team to review. Um, within that development agreement is a first of its kind for residential development is asking for the development group to make a connection from Union Road um, all the way to the new high school. Uh, just for perspective, as I know the map didn't look all that large, is that is 5,000 feet of road. So that that is estimated at $3 million. And this is, by signing this agreement, I would be required to build that road within one year of the high school getting built. Um, this is 500 lots. And if only lots were built, bought in this development, that would be five years, which is highly unlikely. So this is more than likely a 15 year development. And in, during a time of COVID with uh, economic uncertainty, to ask a developer to guarantee a $3 million road without any guarantee of any lot sales or any economic gain, and for the first of its time, I find that as an overreach of city staff. And I'm wondering that why I'd be the first one to be made to do this, this type of agreement and this type of timeline. If you'll see, phase one actually connects Union Road right to Lexington. So if we're talking about um, neighborhood connections and circulation, it's actually achieved right there in phase one. Um, Lexington has had two dead ends and currently has a very long street, longer than Eric Road, that dead ends and has not had circulation for years. So phase one actually circulates that. Future phases after the high school um, allows even more circulation throughout the neighborhood. 
so I wanted to get that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to future meetings, but I wanted to at least um, bring forward the points that I had and, and some of the discussions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dostrom. For our next speaker for public comment, um, we've got Mr. Skane, so go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, Jim Skane, 2215 Clay Street. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Skane. I have the number, yes, as a uh, public forum speech, uh, which I guess uh, is timed at five minutes, I, uh, I want to bring out a, a number of issues. The first issue is the word germane that's in the uh, forum rules. It is a violation of freedom of speech because it gives to anyone who is a city official or council person uh, the right to say that whatever a person is saying is out of order. And in that particular uh, uh, situation, I wish that uh, you would know what happened to me as a result of that uh, word being in there. Because uh, four times I was removed from the council meeting when I was re properly recognized to speak because someone considered in fact, one one time it was you, Mr. Mayor, that what I was saying was not germane. And every time that I was uh, uh, ruled out of order uh, and then uh, removed, uh, obviously Mr. Miller was part of the process as well. Now, in this particular case, uh, three of the four times uh, I uh, did not object uh, very much. But the, the last time, I had a number of things I wanted to say, and um, uh, Mayor Brown uh, ruled me out of order and ordered me removed. In that case, uh, the uh, public safety director, Jeff Olson, uh, physically uh, moved me out of it. Uh, uh, Bertie was there as well, but uh, the real damage was done by Jeff Olson because he uh, used uh, his uh, shoe against my leg and created uh, uh, wounds that are just now healing and, uh, in fact, caused me to uh, have a hospital stay. Now, this was not the way that uh, a person uh, should be removed. And it was completely because the illegal word germane was at the base of it. Because what I was saying was not objectionable. It was only objectionable to uh, uh, Mayor Brown. And uh, as I said on one occasion, it was objectionable to you. So please consider uh, taking Germaine out of the rules and going back to a First Amendment situation. The second thing is uh, that there has been police malpractice uh, in the city. Uh, I have a number of cases that have come to my attention. How much more time do I have, by the way, Mr. Mayor? It's uh, one minute and 45 seconds. Okay. And so uh, this whole business of having your council meetings where both the uh, public uh, safety director and the police uh, chief at the time it was assistant police chief uh, is very intimidating. In fact, some, some people have told me that uh, they... Uh, wouldn't give a, a speech because they didn't want uh, to be taken out of the office, uh, out of the chambers. Now, uh, the, la the last thing I want to say, and I hope I have time for it, is that 
For six months, Mr. Mayor, you have violated uh, the Iowa law with regard to the uh, uh, 2824. It has been declared null and void. It has not been executed. And uh, every one of your work sessions and uh, committee of the whole uh, are illegal because there's no public participation. So the last thing I, I want to say is that, Mr. Mayor, uh, I think for all the good of the people of Cedar Falls, you should resign. And, and thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Mr. Skane. Mr. Mayor, this is Jeff Olson. Can I comment on that? Yes, please, Dr. Olson. I was going to comment as well. Okay, thank you. So um, it, as many of you recall, uh, Mr. Skane was called out of order and he was removed from the council chambers. Uh, he did file a complaint uh, with the city uh, concerning that removal. And that was, that was investigated by an outside agency. Uh, there was video tape, uh, I shouldn't say tape, but there was video of that incident. And uh, the complaint of injuries or any abuse was completely unfounded and, and is untrue. And this is the second time recently in council meetings that he's mentioned that. So I just uh, feel that it's important that we explain uh, what happened uh, with that incident. Thank you, Director Olson. Um, yeah, and just to uh, uh, follow up with that, um, I understand, I have seen the information from that uh, report that uh, Director Olson was exonerated or, or the, the, the handling was as good as it could be. Now, um, one thing that I've, I've uh, directed uh, during my time as mayor is to change the process a bit. So there actually is two uniformed officers who would escort a person out. Um, part of that is, is part of for police presence, that they're in uniform, and that they also have their body cams activated. So um, I don't want to put uh, the public safety director in that kind of position ever again. Um, so with that, I also would just say, too, um, that for the germaneness part, that's something that I'm sure has come up in past meetings about whether that's allowed or not allowed. It's important practice. Um, to ensure that our meetings stay on track and that we, anything that involves city business, even discussion of the word germane is germane uh, because it applies to city business. Um, but only the mayor can make that determination as the presiding official. So when I was a council member, I didn't force anyone out. Um, I referred to the mayor and uh, he agreed. And so I certainly take on that role and, and uh, listen to what everyone says very closely to ensure that it is. Uh, in keeping with uh, the council rules. Um, and uh, I think it's all I have to comment on for that. So, and, and council, I will say too, no issue raised by a speaker under the rules shall be debated by the city council. So. Um, I was hoping for a staff comment regarding Mr. Dahlstrom's point that I, um, I would you. That's fair, is it not? Yes, because you're not asking for council to debate it. So certainly a yeah, point of clarification is fine. If Karen or Stephanie can comment on that, I feel like we've had other situ we we have another situation in the city right now, don't we, where a road was supposed to be constructed or something? And it, I, whatever you have. So I would just comment that uh, the topic on the agenda tonight was the rezoning. And that was discussed um, at two different meetings at the Planning and Zoning Commission. And prior to bringing that to the Planning and Zoning Commission, of course, it went through the staff technical review committee. And we worked with the developer on uh, all the things that uh, staff then brought forward to the Planning and Zoning Commission to discuss. So the, the, the draft agreement that um, was in your packet just for information purposes uh, was submitted to Mr. Dahlstrom last week. But it just as a formalization of what was discussed um, as conditions um, at the Planning and Zoning Commission. So I just, you know, that's a little bit of clarification on, on that item. Okay, thank you. Um, I see no one else uh, wishing to speak for public comment. So uh, before I uh, move to adjourn, I just wanted to say um, thank you to Council Member Tiber. Uh, depending on the outcome of the elections tomorrow, this might be your last council meeting. Uh, thank you very much for your service. If the outcome is unresolved tomorrow, then we'll see you in uh, the next council meeting. So uh, that said, uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved.
Second. Motion Almost. and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, everybody.